Hey guys, Basil and Will with Grayson Hobby. We have another new plane from DW Hobby. With a little bit of glue, you can make this box into that plane. I didn't know what to think about it, but uh, watch the video and check it out. All right, you ready? Yeah. Let's see what we got here. Let's do a little taxi. Turn. Let's turn. Try to get that nose gear up last second though, because I don't want to dig it. Nice, man. Well, I'll be damned. That's very impressive for a little little foamy like. Oh man, with the calm, no wind, this thing's even. Perfect. Ah! Oh yes. <laughs> hey Will, where do you get one of these awesome Cessnas? At GraysonHobby.com or drive to Loganville, Georgia and come get it in store. Some What's assembly available? is required. A little purchase helps from Grayson Hobby, either the plane, the prop, which we recommend, we'll get to that, the battery, or just uh, the kit. Yep. Uh, everything ships from Loganville, Georgia. Nothing drop ships. Everything ships here, right in the U.S. And it's about two to three days to the most of the eastern side of the U.S.A. All the stuff we talk about will be in the description below. The batteries, the props, all that good stuff that we recommend. Maiden flight. Like hold on, hold on. We always record maiden flights, right? Yeah. All right, here we go. All right, he's gonna do a diagonal cross, or what do you call it? Got the wind blowing, hold on. The wind's blowing from really not straight on like a 45. Here we go. Who is this plane for, Will? So this is for somebody that wants to get into the hobby side of the planes where they actually want to build their own planes. Um, guys that are into the flight test uh, profile build, not profile builds, the framed up flight test builds. So DW Hobby has made a lot of profile jobs. This is a different characteristic. This is actually a framed up plane. So this has a plywood frame with an EPP outside. So you have the uh, rigidity and strength of the ply frame but then you have the painted uh, and durability of the EPP on the outside. Almost like the old planes from a long time ago where they had the basswood and then the covering. A kit, like a balsa kit the, in a way, but they're right. using the EPP as the cover. Right, the covering is the EPP, so it makes it way easier to build. Plus you can take you know, right. fingernails and you're not poking now, holes in it. <laughs> that's just the fuselage. The wing is totally yeah. all foam. So the yeah. fuselage has the, the, uh, the ply skeleton. Yes, correct. So you get the kind of the best of both worlds. You get the rigidity. It's the a strength. little bit of everything in the yeah. building. It's it kind of brings build. back an old style build. Yes. Okay. Here we go. Well, yeah. You know, sake of the video, we're gonna go on the runway. Hopefully, the wind doesn't pick up. Oh, uh, no wind right now. There you go. That's all you gotta do. Get a good landing. Pretend like you're doing a cut touch. Minutes. Twelve minutes. Wow. So how much time do you think you really could fly that? 12 minutes. 12 I would, minutes. I wouldn't over, I wouldn't. 10 minutes. If you're gonna be heavy on the throttle or the stock prop, probably eight to 10 minutes. Uh, the slow flyer prop actually, because it had plenty of thrust without the you know, throttle on it, uh, the amp drop was probably actually lower. So that's how we were able to get more than 10 minutes. Six right. foot? You think this right. is a six foot table? Before you, you gotta hold and just do the high rates on. Yeah. Check, check, check. Give it a throttle. Three, two, one. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Perfect. With every plane we get, we always want to modify. Well, okay, I have my right. ways of doing things and my way's right, so, no, I'm just kidding. Um, but the factory prop it came with was like a 945 or, I'm sorry, 96, like APC clone. Two things about it, one, it's a heavy prop with a really, really thick hub. You only have like a turn of the prop nut on that thing okay. to lock it down. Take the stock prop, throw it away, put it in your junk box for another plane. Use it for Don't use it on this plane. Blue mixing stick? Yeah, yeah, epoxy mixing stick right there. <laughs> what we ended up using was a APC slow flyer, a nine by six slow flyer. Perfect power, um, good speed, good lift. It flew really well. Long flight times, it stayed efficient. Oh gosh, um, very long flight times. You could probably drop it down to an eight inch prop if you want a little more ground clearance. Worth every penny in my opinion. Definitely. Um, for the simple fact, you're gonna get an APC prop that's probably better balanced and it'll screw on the hub and you don't have to worry about possibly stripping out the hub, tightening up on that one and a half turns you get. Now, recommendation two, battery. So the factory battery they call for, I believe was a 22 to 2600. Which is a no. very, um, very large battery for this little So thing. in conjunction with the other DW hobby planes that we reviewed, the 13 to 1500 3-cell LiPo seems to be spot on for this size plane. Um, we used a China Hobby Line 1500. Uh, it's a 140 gram battery roughly. 
Uh, the battery bay, put it in the tray all the way forward. This thing balanced out perfect. It flew great. I didn't have to change the battery forward or back after that at all it during any testing. It was spot on. Flew very good. All right, so those are the two recommendations. That That is far as what I would do is from outside of their recommendations. The plane itself comes with uh, a 920 kV motor, which was more than enough for this. It has a 20 amp ESC. Um, guys, if you're going to experiment with props a lot, maybe bump it up to an aftermarket 30, like a Grayson Hobby 30 amp. Um, not necessarily need it. We're running a 9.6 here, but hot summer months, I could see it possibly. All electronics come fully soldered, bullet connectors. Oh, yes, yeah. Battery connector, XT60, so it's literally a... No soldering is required. I know a lot of guys like the bill, but they hate the solder. That is eliminated. Yes. And then it's going to come with four 9-gram plastic gear servos. Uh, if you plan on bashing things, maybe Metal Gear kind of thing. But honestly, these servos have been really good for us. Um, the 9-gram ones have been working oh, very well. I haven't had all. any issues out of any of the 9-gram servos in any of the DWs we've tried. Um, so I'm happy with them. I'm going to keep rocking them. In the event I need to replace them, yeah, I'll probably put an MG90 in it if I have to. Okay. Because um, of the cost of them. All right. Let's go over the specs real quick. What are the uh, So wingspan? this plane, let me look at the boxes. I don't know what off the top of my head. The wingspan is 960 millimeters from tip to tip. Tip to tip. The length of the plane is 700 millimeters. 700. So we're talking just shy of a, a meter. Mm -hmm. So it's like a 39-inch wingspan, 38-inch wingspan. Uh, for those of you that like the Imperial system still. Um, flying weight, 600 grams, which is, I don't even know, 600 grams. How many work. elephants is this? Yeah, uh, less than one <laughs> elephant in okay. weight. No. Okay. Um, but it's a decent little size plane. Uh, it flies very well. I was extremely shocked. Oh, made in flight. Perfect. Yeah, no. I, okay. I literally was like, man, I threw this thing together. So it was thrown together so quick. I really, I was kind of like, something's going to go wrong. As soon as we got out there, first thing, I pre-flight checked it. Didn't tighten any of the easy links on the no, wing. that's right. So we did have to go back and do that. So I avoided failure by doing a pre-flight check. So guys, always remember to do a pre-flight check. Um, but once I sent in all the trims, I just threw your standard 50, 75, 100% rates on my Radio Master radio. I'm using an R88 receiver, just a little cheap receiver in this guy. Radio Master transmitter as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, threw it all together, got it out there, literally took off. It was... Almost perfect on the rates. I didn't, I mean, low rates flew great. High rates flew good. It it was just good. I mean, it was one of those things. The plane flew very well. I was very pleasantly surprised. Um, one thing I will say, though, I started horsing it around a lot. I was able to get that wing to flex. I was doing very extreme dives, <laughs> very hard pull-ups, and I was able to get that wing to flex. If you guys choose to try to run a 2200 three-cell battery, I would probably put a little more carbon in the wings. Hold that thought. When he means horsing around, he was going straight down at maximum velocity speed, then pulling up. Yeah. I'm surprised everything stayed together. <laughs> the servo. The plane is not designed for that, but it did it. We did a very hard stress test, and it passed with flying yeah. colors. Yeah, I was uh, surprised I had enough elevator to pull up a couple times. Right. Um, so that being said, probably most of you who watch this are not going to do that. Yeah, if you're going to fly it like a Cessna, flies great. If you're going to just bash it as a little fun trainer, it will fly fine. But if you are gonna run heavier battery guys, beef up the wing a little bit. Put a little extra spar on there in the wing um, just to provide a little extra strength on the wing. Cause you don't, the last thing you wanna do is fold the wing while you're flying cause right. it's too much weight. And that's why we recommend a 13 to 1500 LiPo battery. One, it balanced perfectly. And two, it's gonna be a little bit lighter overall. Right. What was the biggest thing I think uh, that we just were like in awe about. The taxiing. Oh, the, yes, on the ground, yes. You and your brother could not stop talking about how well it taxied. I have had so many cheap foamies that just don't taxi for squat. Actually taxied it on the run. Obviously, we're a little spoiled because we have a nice geotextile runway at our field. Um, however, we did t try it on grass. It taxied well on grass. Low cut, obviously. Um, we took off on grass. We took off on grass. grass and other things. There you go. Short field takeoff. I think I saw some inverted flying too. <clears throat> yeah, I was flying inverted. Yeah, flying inverted. I mean, that's, that's a requirement if I fly. So. Right. Uh, we had loops on it. We had rolls. We had. Um, what about the rolls? How about the barrel rolls? Rolls are good. I believe I threw a little rudder in with the rolls to make it a little more linear. Um, I mean, it is a high wing, semi-symmetrical wing, so it's not going to be like drill bit rolls. 
But as far as for an average flying plane, you don't have time to go to the Dollar Tree store, get the plans. Cut yeah, the if you don't want to do the plan cutting on, and that and that, that takes a that is time. honestly probably okay. the turnoff for me on right. those things. So. But this comes already ready to go, uh, pre-painted, all cut out. All you gotta do is assemble it. Yeah. Um, now we did just use the factory two rubber bands when flying. I didn't add any rubber bands to it. Um, if you have any at home, I would probably say throw an extra rubber band um, from the front to back on both sides as well as the cross. Um, it will help hold the wing a little bit stronger to it. But again, it's one of those things, a little bit of give is not the worst thing when you're doing crazy dive. Yeah, so my brother came out to the field again. Um, he, we are after, no, it wasn't, it was the second flight. Okay, but it was mid-flight. Yeah. It was literally, he didn't get to take um, off. He just put like, here. Yeah, I just handed him the radio, passed it over to him, he flew it. Um, yeah. All right, Mike, you ready? The test, if this thing can land. Oh, we can land. I mean, it can land like no throttle, too. Oh! Right, Mike doesn't like the landing, I'm gonna go for it again. I'm gonna keep the motor on longer. Yeah, fly it in. Cut the throttle once you land. There you go. And a taxi. Just yeah. Plenty of power, flies great, lands good, goes well in on a paved surface goes well on a grass yeah grass so if surface. you only have a like a baseball field soccer field uh dirt you know packed dirt something like that this thing will fly there yep so that's the cool thing about it you're not limited with having to go on pavement right you want to make sure you can get the slot in that was the biggest thing right um however the land they never mentioned anything on the battery hatch whatsoever um it comes with this piece pre-cut uh but it was like an empty hatch so what i did is I took the, the factory foam that was left, I just put a layer of blender in here, blender and tape there, blender and tape on the bottom side to create a hinge. So I got a tape hinge here. This is an old control horn I had laying around from another plane. I just bolted on it and I trimmed a wedge. I don't know if you'll be able to see that in the video, but I trimmed a little uh, V cut in here to get into the groove beyond the landing gear. That's it, we rambled off enough. Great airplane, we had loads of fun chasing each other, chasing birds, chasing you and get carrier takeoffs. <laughs> Definitely two thumbs up for me. I really enjoyed it. I actually was very impressed with it. Um, I wasn't expecting a lot going into it just because it was a Cessna. This actually was a fun little plane. I left with a smile on my face. Right. So I'm going to give it two thumbs up. And everybody needs a go-to plane. When all your other crap is crashed or broken, this is the one you prefer. Yeah, yeah. will fly. And this is a good, you know, you can throw lights on it, stuff like that. Um, it's got enough area in the battery, or I'm sorry, the servo bay area with the receiver. It's got plenty of room. You could try out gyros stuff like that if oh, you yeah. want to but you know this is a trainer you know gyros. yeah all you right don't enough that. i guess we're unboxing something cool yeah. i'm here all right so check it out first thing i notice motor servos and everything is pre-soldered you got your bullet connectors and your xt60 speed control you, you forgot to speak what did i say you said motor servos oh and nothing else yeah okay but yeah all right so foam wheels Fly. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What is this? Fly. This is supposed to be a foamy. Why has this got plywood in it? My guess is so it reinforces it. Yeah, this is, okay, so this is more like a hybrid, guys. This is actually like a plywood inner frame. Uh, you can a see skeleton. The fuse there with the foam external. So it's a little bit of more rigidity for this style plane. Uh, the Hawk actually has some plywood in it. So here's your, your wing pre, uh, what do they call that? Silk screen? Um, cutouts for your hinge. Yeah, and you'll notice hey, this has an air. Feel free as well. to correct me here. <laughs> All right, we'll just let him talk, guys. Um, and it has your little cutout for your spar. Get closer, yeah. cameraman. All right. So this is going to be the wingspan. About yay, right? Or does it get together? Good little trainer. Why didn't the head? All right. So this is unusual. <laughs> so this is your. Your two pieces of foam for your left and right, obviously. And to get a feel for the length of the plane. Well, go like that. Yeah. So there you are. There's your airplane. There goes that. So, and then, uh, yeah. Now, I built the version like this. It was um, the LED version. And the Night Flyer, that's Night right. Flyer, yeah. And I could tell you that the gear they give you, the hardware, is so robust and so complete it's the best kit it can hold up to your flying it, my building it can hold up to my building 
Flying is a whole other story. But anyways, it, the wing is held on by a rubber band, uh, which is included in here. So it's a good little kit for those who want to build something. You want to knock around in the front yard. You want to crash into a wheel, crash into other people. Perfect your plane. Yeah, it's um, not a drone, so we don't crash into me. It's yeah. just drones. The glue I used was going to be foam tack and also regular CA, because this is EPP. So you can use regular CA and kicker. Yeah, it'll help fuse the foam yep. and all that. It's a little tricky getting the fuselage perfect. Um, I used packing tape to, or painter's tape to kind of keep everything aligned, and it worked out perfect for me. It's kind of neat. Yeah, very neat. This definitely has more hardware in terms of basswood than the Night Flyer. So I'm anxious to see this one fly. This is a very fun flyer at the park. Perfect for a baseball field. Um, like a middle 12 to 13 year old baseball field. Yeah, About a 150 fence. If anybody's familiar with the old Gillow's, Gillow's kits and all that, this is way better laser cut. Um, so the wood will come out no problem. There's a little tab just trim and Show. that's it. Show. All you right. See how well it's cut. Yeah. Yes, very good. <clears throat> Directions are very complete. Um, when I built mine, I had no, I had no problems with the Night Flyer. I can only imagine this is going to be better because this is a new version. And uh, that's it. Yep. So Will's going to build it, and we're going to go fly it. All right. I'm going to build it. Okay. All right. It's not a drone though. It's got wings. What do I do? Right. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's it. Stay tuned for our next video. We'll be the flying video. Um, hopefully, it'll be soon. Crappy weather outside. That's Always. It. It's yeah. Georgia. All right.